first tournament I ever entered, we almost won it on a floating worm. Before we start talking about floating worms, guys, make sure you do me two favors. Remember, we put out new videos at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Sunday and Wednesday. Remember that. So make sure you're tuning in every Sunday and Wednesday. If you're not getting those notifications, make sure you go out and ring that bell. Make sure you go out. If, if for some reason it unsubscribes you or you're not getting them, go out and actually unsubscribe, resubscribe, ring that bell so you get those notifications. So everybody's got opinions on what a floating worm is, what you should do with it, how they like to rig it, and how you're gonna catch fish on it. Okay, I'm gonna tell you, I've seen people on YouTube catch fish on iPhones. So proving that it's a good way to do it by catching fish may not be the exact way to prove that it catches fish. Now the floating worm does catch fish, okay, it does, 110%, but I've got some caveats and some tweaks to it that I like to throw in because I fish, and if you could see this water around me, you'd understand this water is easily 15 to 20 foot clear. I can see the bottom. I do some things a little differently when it comes to floating worms, okay? So what is a floating worm? A floating worm is any bait that floats or sinks very, very slowly. I'll even put some flukes or fluke style baits in with that. I've used them just right along with a floating worm. A floating worm, however, gives a little more action to it. Remember, there's always exceptions to the rule and you should tweak those based on your water. So the most common baits that you see, you hear everybody talking about the methylate worm. This is a floating worm. It's actually made by Bass Munitions. Again, don't know if they're still making them. I'll have to talk to the new owner and, and see, and I haven't got to talk to them yet. They also made this one for me, one of my favorite bubble gum. This is by Bass Pro Shop. Now, they call it a floating worm. It's in their tournament series. I don't even know if they still make these, but it's actually one of my favorite colors, and it's a sherbet style color. But if you're fishing super clear water, you can actually make some pretty interesting changes to that bait because these baits are gonna get a lot, and I do mean a lot, of action in the water. Or you can go with something like this, the Zero Z2, which is kind of that, you know, whatever you wanna call it, Elastec, whatever it is, stretchy plastic that you don't wanna put with the rest of everything. Whether it's Z-Man, Strike King, whoever, you wanna use this. You can actually put a little five alt or a five alt offset worm hook in this and it works great. The tail doesn't have as much action as a bigger worm like this, so it's a little more subtle and a lot more durable. You can even go to a straight green worm, which is something that I love to do in ultra clear water. That really has a lot to do with how or what type of bass I'm fishing for it too color begins to matter more in the post spawn, which is generally when I'm picking up a floating worm. So when and where to fish a floating worm. My favorite times to fish a floating worm is from ultra, ultra, like almost spawn to pre-spawn when you're seeing fry garters. I'll pull a floating worm out when I really think those bass are starting to pull up on the beds. They haven't committed. You see them up there running around. They're chasing things off. They're making their beds or they're getting ready to come to the bed. That is a great time to throw that floating worm because you swim it through and they'll come up and hit it. They're mad. They don't want it to be there. They're ready for it to go away. Great time to catch them. When they're on the beds, you can swim it through their beds. Again, a lot of times they'll just come right up and they'll nail it. After they come off the beds, we start seeing fry garters. Perfect time 
to work this around areas where there's fry, whether it be in heavy bushes, whether it be just down a rocky bank, you know, those fry, they'll come off the bed and they'll generally move to docks, places where they've got some sort of cover. And then they'll pull out as the evening begins so that they can feed on small bugs and plankton, that sort of stuff. That's really my favorite time to throw a floating worm is when you've got those bass that are guarding fry. Man, it, it can be so fun to just go down a bank and, and toss these floating worms into places and work them out and just have them come up. And when you see fry kind of scatter, man, you better hang on because you're about to get walloped, let me tell you. Now let's talk about the components of a floating worm. And there's two ways that I, I rig it on two different rods. The very first way I like to rig it is like this. Now, a lot of guys, and if you're new to it, I would heavily suggest you put a small swivel up here. The swivel and the hook will give the worm weight and will drag it. You can also control the rate of fall, so you may not want it to go very deep, and generally I don't. But the rate of fall can be you can be controlled by the size of swivel you put, and, and generally I'll put it you know, about a foot up the line. That'll keep out line twist, and that can be real important on a spinning reel. I generally rig it wacky rigged and I'll use some sort of uh, circle hook, the heaviest circle hook I can find. And to be honest with you, I just don't think the hook matters a lot. You can use a EWG, you can use pretty much any hook you want. Whatever hook you want that is heavier to be able to get the rate of fall that you want. We'll get into talking about fishing and the retrieve a little bit later. But one of the reasons if you're not fishing fry garters you can see is you want this to kind of fall just out of sight and then pop it right back up to where you can see it and fall just out of sight. Again, we'll talk about retrieves after. This is one of my older, this is a, an old Sierra two, uh, 2500 and I have got K9 10 pound fluoro on here. It's not fluorocarbon, we'll just call it a copolymer-ish. How's that? That's what I throw on here. Now, I don't generally use monofilament because I do want it to drop. And this has a slower fall rate than say regular fluorocarbon. You can use fluorocarbon. The Pro 100 by K9 is 100% fluorocarbon, but it'll pull the worm down a little bit as the line falls, so it's harder to keep it up. I like this a little bit better. This works much better for me. 10 pound test because even that slows the fall down just a little bit. And a seven foot medium fast action. You can even go with moderate. I like the fast action. Works just fine. I can put this anywhere I want it. Seven foot for a little better accuracy because I do tend to skip it a lot. And if, you're, if you've never skipped a lot, this is a great worm to just get out there. This and a Senko. Great worm to get out there and just learn how to skip. The next way I rig it, and this is for a little heavier cover. This is a rod that Kistler sent me, and this is their seven foot light, medium heavy, and it is a fast action. This is their weightless worm, Cinco. This is the rod that I'm gonna throw this bait and skip it straight into some gnarly cover with no weight on it. It's got enough, enough backbone to where I'm gonna be able to pull them out because they're shallow guys. We're not letting it sink way down. We're gonna skip this in here. We're gonna twitch it a few times. When they hit it, we're gonna pull them out. And I've got it paired with one of my favorite light bait throwing rock reels. And that's a Lose Custom Pro. This is a six, eight to one because you're twitching it. This is a seven foot two. I mean, this rod is non-existent. I mean, I can basically do that. Rigging it this way, generally, if you haven't seen my short, I like to put a little lump in here. I like to run it. You'll see how high I run it up. Something that you can control if you want it to dive, you can come through the bottom. But if you'll see, I'm kind of through the top. So when it pulls, it pulls up. You can set it to where it pulls down. And so that gets it to come up because I'm going to twitch, twitch and kind of let it sink out of sight, twitch, twitch again, okay? Those types of worms, that is a five alt, and everything will be in the description, guys. Again, it does support the channel. You can get out there, 
click on those links, go buy the stuff if you want to buy it, but use those links. It helps me out a ton. That is my combo. Again, believe it or not, again, 10 pound test canine fluoro, which is a copolymer-ish line. It's got a little bit of stretch to it, but you're still going to get a good hook set. It's not like mono and you're going to be able to keep the bait up okay let me jump up and i'll show you a couple of retrieves so i know it's a little windy hopefully you can hear me but here's the deal so this is the zero from strike king one of my favorite baits i've got it rigged weedless so it's great in places like this and it's really great to skip now as far as retrieves go it's really the same as a soft jerk bait or a jerk bait just twist twitching it some of the things that i like to do is twitch it so that it just falls out of sight and i twitch it back up the floating worm is also a great tool to learn how to skip with a bait caster and again it's really no difference with a spinning rod you just got it wacky rigged that's the only difference and i would work the outside or maybe drop it in and work down some of this stuff but with this bait where it's texas rigged or tech exposed it comes through a little better so make sure you pick up a floating worm this season especially in that post spawn action this thing can be killer i love them and i love to throw them whether it be on spinning gear or casting gear you can really do either one it, it really doesn't matter you know casting gear just it's a little heavier duty that's the reason why i I go back and forth. But as always, tell me your guys' experience with a floating worm. Tell me some stories about it down in the description because you know I love to talk about fishing with you. Like it if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you guys ring that bell so you get the notifications because we do new videos Sunday and Wednesday. And as always, you guys rock.